One of the most popular categories for vehicles is a subcompact crossover, and this is one of them, and it's brand new to the field. There's so many competitors in this category, so you have to come in strong. You've got to have good safety, good ride comfort, good audio system, good technology, good features, good performance. This is the Mazda CX-30. It's brand new, and we're going to show it to you today. Stay right with us. Welcome to Car Coach Reports. I'm Lauren Fix, and this is the 2020 Mazda CX-30. Now, Mazda's been known for great value in sedans. They've got, of course, the CX-5, which is super popular, and they've got smaller vehicles. But they wanted to come in with a subcompact crossover that met everyone's needs, and that's a very difficult challenge because it's about performance and handling, comfort, the ability to have five people ride with you and still have storage and back. And so they decided to come in with the Mazda CX-30. This vehicle has a lot to offer. There's one engine and one screen size, and those are kind of the things that people are looking for. You think, why are those important factors? They are. There are actually 10 important factors when it comes to buying a vehicle, and we're going to show you all those with our Car Coach Reports rating. We'll show it to you along the way and give you a total at the end to give a good comparison and then compare it to some of the other subcompact crossovers we've driven and you can see what meets your needs. Again, I always say test drive every vehicle. Don't just take my word for it. Go out there and drive it because you have to see how it fits into your lifestyle because the number one important factor is seating comfort, then visibility, that is what some of our factors, and then it's all the safety and performance. So really important that you find a vehicle that fits every single aspect to make you comfortable because you're going to live with this vehicle somewhere around three to five years and you want to make sure it beats every factor. Let's go for a ride and I'll show you what I found. We had the opportunity to drive the brand new CX-30 from Palm Springs, California to San Diego and um, luckily this time I did not have a drive partner and my co-host Paul Bryan is on another mission. So I decided I could really spend some time with the handling and the performance aspects of this car. One engine for the full lineup. There are three options with you have front wheel drive or all wheel drive and there's also a lower performance version. For performance, I gave it a 7. It has good performance. I wish it had just a little bit more, but is that necessary? No, because this vehicle has more than enough power to get you around your daily life. For handling, they've done a great job at Mazda doing some upgrades, uh, almost like a vector control if you're looking at some of the competition, that allows it to stay within the lanes, really good grip to the roadway, very predictive. Um, you're not seeing any sort of sloppiness in the steering, and they've done a really nice job on the steering for the CX-30, and I'm gonna give it an eight. For safety, this vehicle literally has everything that you need in this price point because it can get very expensive to add a lot of these safety features. But the ones that you want besides a backup camera, cross traffic alert, and some of the more advanced items like Ford collision warning, those are part of this vehicle. When you're looking at the Kia Soul or the Hyundai Kona or the Jeep or any of these competitor vehicles which are listed down below, make sure to compare apples to apples. You've got different safety features with different three letter acronyms. And the ones you're looking for are things like Ford Collision Warning, Cross Traffic Alert, Blind Spot Detection, Lane Change Departure, and those are on this vehicle. Now they're not as aggressive on this vehicle as they are on others, so it's really important that you compare them to each other, test drive these vehicles, and see how they interface with your daily life. For safety, I gave it an 8. When it comes to visibility, which is a really important factor when owning any vehicle, you have a big windshield, nice size glass, and the back glass, because of the style of this compact crossover, is a little bit angled. I gave it an 8. Pretty good visibility, but the fact that it has cross traffic alert is a massive plus. The driver's side seat is really comfortable. They did a wonderful job with all the ergonomics and lumbar support. You would be impressed. I got in the seat right away and I said, wow, it's comfortable. Lots of well thought out scientific background. Then you go to the passenger seat. It's like sitting on a plank. The passenger seat has no support at all and very minimal adjustment. Let's take a look at the second row. The second row is a little tight, but remember it is a subcompact. Great for little kids. Now this seat, the passenger seat, 
is manual. And that is a manual fore and aft for the back portion as well. And it still kind of limits the space for your knees. So if you got a child in a child safety seat, you might get kicked in the back. Again, you should fit your child safety seats in. As I say every time, I say this in every review, put your child safety seats in, see what it's like in the back seat. The headroom is not too bad, I'm 5'8". Good shoulder room, a spot for a third person in the middle, and a nice center armrest with two cup holders. This makes it good for five small people. Remember, if you're bringing three large adults in the back, it's going to be a bit tight. Back here, as far as accessories, there really isn't anything. There's just a little pocket, and then in here, there's just the vents. Very limited, but remember, look at the price point. Look at the value. Overall, as far as seating, the driver's seat is really good. Two-way lumbar, well-designed. The passenger seat, not so comfortable. Back seat, there is pretty good lumbar here, but overall, there's a limitation. So for seating, it came in pretty average, so I gave it a five. Technology is an important factor when it comes to buying a vehicle. Now you think of it as maybe, you know, autonomous driving and safety, but there's really more to that. It's that center screen that's important to you. Is it a touch screen? Does it work? Again, that's a personal opinion. Mazda believes that the touch screen is a distraction while you're looking down the road and you take your eyes off the road to touch the screen. That moment is a moment that could be an accident. So they have none of their screens being touch screen. Now many of us may touch the screen, when we're stuck at a traffic light. And that is an important factor to consider. Now for me, I like the touch screen. And so I have to really take that into consideration when I rate the technology. Part of the technology is the audio system and Bose has a great eight speaker audio system in its premium line. It is an option, but I have to say it really has great balance and it's more insulated. So you're not playing music and the person next to you can hear it. So they've insulated the interior you can hear. There's nothing. They did a really nice job of insulating the new CX-30 so it was a more quiet ride. Great for having conversations with people. Not that their previous vehicles or any of their vehicles are allowed. There are other brands that are. This one is pretty quiet to begin with and even quieter now, especially if you're playing your music. Now, technology also includes the fact that there's satellite radio, of course. Apple CarPlay, Android Auto is standard. That is a major plus. All screens are 8.8 .8 inches that's also a major plus. So they've done a good job. All of their controls are here in the center console, very easy to use, though there are many levels you have to go through to get to what you want. There is a star there, and if you hit that star, it gives you your favorites. I guess they claim that, you know, you have your few settings for where you go and your eight to radio stations, and that's, again, a personal thing. For me, I have, you know, probably around eight radio stations and a couple destinations that I go to on a regular basis that might require navigation. So that's all under pressing that star button. So that is an improvement. For technology, I gave it an eight. When it comes to features, that's a different story. I think if you look at some of the competition, the Kia Soul, the Hyundai Kona, uh, the Jeep Renegade, there's so many, the Rogue Sport, uh, you start looking at what they offer. And the one thing that I see that Kia and Hyundai are really good about doing is adding air-cooled seats. Of course, it's in the more premium lines. You're looking at an entry level to an entry level, or in this case, we're driving a premium vehicle and comparing it to a premium loaded Hyundai Kona or a Kia Soul, which are the pretty much leaders in the marketplace of Ford EcoSport. Uh, you start looking at some of, there's a whole list down below, and you can go into a few a conclave, et cetera. You notice that many of them are offering wireless charging there's no wireless charging. Many of them are offering air-cooled seats. There are no air-cooled seats offered. So from that perspective, that's not a positive. What I do like is the nine exterior colors, the five interior combinations, including this cool white leather seats, which you can get as an option. You can also get five different combinations, including a blue leatherette, which I call pleather, plastic leather, uh, or cloth interior. So there are some really nice features. And because of that, I gave it a seven. There's a lot of quality when you're looking at the Mazda built vehicles. They really did a nice job on the ride quality, on the build quality. The gaps are nice, the design is nice. So for a design, I gave it a nine. And probably the best perspective of this vehicle is from the rear. Love the rear tail lights, love that three quarter rear view, really nicely done. And of course, the build quality and design go hand in hand. They both earned a nine. As I said, one of the best perspectives is the rear of this vehicle. When you go in the back of the Mazda CX-30, this is the all-wheel drive. Of course, we drove the loaded version. We 
put our luggage in it, and I have quite a bit of luggage because I got to carry all my camera gear. We found there was plenty of space. There is a cover that goes over the top, which I removed because I wanted to have some good vi video for you to see what's in here. I've got three pieces of luggage, which you can use easily put in more. You can put two sets of clubs in, wouldn't be a problem. There is a mini spare in the back, which is appreciated because if you know how to change a flat tire, you'll be glad you have something rather than a tire inflation product or calling for road service. For value overall with this vehicle, top to bottom, I was really impressed. Adding in the power lift gate and the more premium levels, this came with a value score of an eight. We made it to San Diego safely, as you can see, and we spent the full day driving the CX-30. So you really got a good experience on curvy roads, on street roads, on highway, and really got a good feel for what the vehicle was all about. That's why we gave it a total score of 77. In this subcompact category, there are a lot of features and different vehicles, and the CX-30 really performs well. They're going to have great success with this car because the price point is so reasonable, and this is gonna bring a lot of people into the marketplace. We've driven all the competitors. You can check out some of them here. Also, some other videos that might meet your needs. Check out our social media down below. Don't forget to look at the full list of competitors, as well as the safety features and some of the specs in this car. I figured instead of me telling you about them, I'll give you an experience of what it's like to spend a day in the CX-30. We appreciate you watching. Of course, don't forget to follow us at Car Smarts and Car Coach Reports. Don't forget to sign up for that newsletter, and we will see you next time. Have a great day.